Hey folks, hearing that I'm live. Uh, this is, I'm PMC Trilogy. This is G-Savior, the legend of G-Savior, the very first Gundam game for the PlayStation 2. Uh, this is gonna be eight levels of hot beats and large mechs from the far future of the universal century. So uh, I hope you're ready for the legend of G-Savior. This, this game is set in UC-224. This game takes place 145 years after the events of the original Mobile Suit Gundam. And that's important and you should tell any Gundam nerds you know about that. So, uh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's go. Yeah. Let's go enjoy some, some Canadian Gundams. Uh, time here will begin when I select a new game. I'll give a countdown from three, three, two, one, go. All right. So we are doing the any percent category for G savior. Uh, G savior consists of eight levels. We're going to be piloting a mech. The mech has a pretty weird control scheme. I mentioned that this is the very first Gundam game for PlayStation 2. And that's a true statement. I didn't lie when I said that. In fact, it's so early that this game was released in Japan before the PlayStation 2 is released outside of Japan. We're going to be using a few different mobile suits over the course of this. We're starting with the original G-Savior. So if you had watched the G-Savior film set in UC-223, this is the G-Savior that you would have started off with. Uh, the, the OG Savior, you might say. Uh, a few things to note about this. It has no sub weapon, that'll come up later. It has a very small hover meter, uh, which is that little blue bar that just uh, started refilling. Uh, the hover meter is important because for like the first half of the run, we have to manage it, especially this guy, because he has such a small little baby hover meter. So I'm gonna be stopping. If you let the hover meter completely expire, it's going to take longer for it to recharge than it would if you if you like do what I'm doing. So what I'm going to be doing is whenever I decide that I, I would rather not, you know, wait like five seconds for it to recharge, I'm going to stop and do two hops, two quick steps, and that's going to give me enough time for the hover meter to recharge. Uh, let's talk about some of the other meters. The red meter is the health meter. Uh, hopefully you won't see that move at all during the run. Uh, this game is pretty deadly. This even on I'm playing on easy, which mostly affects the number of enemies as opposed to the damage dealt. I mean, there is a little bit of change in damage dealt, but uh, the primary difference with difficulties is number of enemies. Uh, the other really important meter is that yellow meter, uh, which you haven't seen move yet. The yellow meter. Oh, good. I got shot in the back. Not important. Don't worry about it. Uh, the yellow meter is the shield meter. So that's the thing I'm, I'm bringing up here. The shield meter absorbs hits from the front of you. Prize, right? It's a shield. Uh, but it only it's directional only works in the front so the uh the idea with the, the shield meter and it immediately starts going back up once you release the button so you'll notice that whenever oh whenever i'm doing commentary and i, I don't pay attention and i let my hover yeah now you can see how long it takes for it to recharge if you uh you don't actually uh, you don't actually get off the gas before it runs out. So anyway, the general progress of the game is that each stage will consist of us going forward through a level, and then we will fight a boss at the end. Uh, the first two levels will be done with the OG Savior. Uh, the second level with the OG Savior has one exception, which we'll get to. Let me get to it. Yeah, hard difficulty is, again, mostly... Uh, challenging because of how many enemies there are and also if you're trying to unlock things a lot of the unlockables in this game are gated behind uh, hard difficulty runs or um or the the, the the only thing i haven't unlocked in this game yet is completing the game on hard with an only og savior uh which is challenging on the later levels because of the limited offensive capabilities of this mobile suit now we're, this this door has the boss fight, so I don't need to worry about running out of ju uh, juice there for the uh, the hover meter. I'll start the boss fight with full full meter. Uh, this guy, we're just gonna stun lock this first boss. So this guy doesn't really put up shields. He just uh, so you can just rapid fire him and stun lock him. The one thing to note is that. When we're not in hover meter, if we get if we're not in hover state, if we get too close to him, we'll automatically pull out our beam saber. So we want to try to maintain about the same distance from him to keep him stun locked, but also not get so close that we are risking uh, pulling out our sword. The melee combat in this game is bad. It's really, really unfortunate. I do not recommend it. 
It will it will hurt you. Yeah, not to, no, I mean, look, sometimes the strat is mashing the button and shooting him a bunch. <laughs> All right, so we're on to the second stage. We're still going to be using the OG G Savior uh, for this. Uh, this is actually set in, I think this is set in the ruins of something from Victory Gundam. Or no, this is set in Sydney, Australia. I think this is the ruins of the original colony drop. So again, lots of Gundam order. You can actually see, I think there's a Zagok that you can see. In, uh, in like a fall, like a broken Zagok for, for the Gundam fans. So, okay, so let's talk about maneuverability. I've already talked about hovering state in this game. What is up with, um, what is up with not hovering state? So when I'm not hovering, my left and right on the analog stick cause me to turn. When I am hovering, uh, left and right on the analog stick are more of a strafing motion. So that's why I can like wiggle back and forth like this when I'm hovering, but when I press left and right. So you're you're stuck kind of having to use different forms of movement depending on which state you're in. Uh, this is, you know, this is an experience. The good news though, is that this is the last stage where we'll be using the original G Savior. We're gonna get much faster suits after this. So yeah, like the, the, the first levels are, are a little slow, but that's because we're using we're using the old tech, all right? Uh, the old 223 tech. We need to get the, the hot new 224 tech. Uh, important to note, in the lore of G-Savior, the G-Savior mobile suit is designed by John Savior. And I am I'm completely serious when I say that. That is actually what it is. They actually said, yeah, John Savior made this. So shout outs to John Savior. So we just got one more second. This, this level actually kind of curls around in on itself. Uh, I wish there was like actual skips in this, but uh, <laughs> no, they mean savior. They do. They really do. It would be funny if that was the case. I mean, it's not, not impossible. Who knows? But I do think that is true because I, they, they had some plans for an English release. So I think some of the English translations in this are kind of serious. All right. So this is the one boss fight where we die. So I'm just going to die. I'm gonna be like, oops, guess I'll die. I guess I'll die. All right, there we go. Good job by me. Put, put another quote strat on that one as well. All right, so we're now gonna get the G3 savior, the G3 savior. Please don't ask what happened to the G2 savior. Now the good news about this guy is that it is a much bigger hover meter and it also just goes faster. Uh, this game is only for the PlayStation 2. This was the first Gundam game released for the PlayStation 2 in summer of 2000, I think. All right, so now we're a lot faster. And also, we have much more health and much more hover. Also, our beats are very fat right now. This game has a great soundtrack. Of course, that guy stepped to the right. Irk. But yeah, again, the same same routine here, but now we're able to evade a lot more of the enemies. I should know, yeah, if you're interested in playing this game, all of the gameplay menus are in English and all of the voice acting is in English for the cutscenes. So obviously you can't read the subtitles for the cutscenes, but uh, every, all the voice acting is in English, so you can just kind of live your best life. Be, be the G legend of G-Saver that you want to be. One thing that's difficult is that when you are hovering and you're weaving back and forth, you obviously are, are constrained in how you can turn. So there I was too close to one of the proximity mines, these purple things I'm blowing up. They will blow up if you get too close to them. Yeah, I think actually, I think most of the runs on the leaderboard for this game are emulator runs. So I do think this game is emulatable. 
Uh, I am playing it on a PS2 using magic. All right, cool. So I guess, I guess what time it is again, folks. Yeah, it's that time. Time where we shoot people and walk towards them slowly. So I guarantee, I, I promise you the boss strats will get more sophisticated than this. <laughs> but for right now, uh, this is what we do. Same rules apply about keeping our distance because we don't want to enter uh, sword mode. But yeah, no, I mean, look, when in doubt, fire shots. When in doubt, shots fired, you know? They're, the the bosses will will get a little more sophisticated before the end. I promise. Ooh, dodged out. He broke out. All right, he's dead. Oh no. Oh, Ooh, mobile suit though. He's got some good some good bits and bobs there. I should mention that the designer of all the mobile suits in both the movie and the game uh, was Kunio Okawara, who is the original Mobile Suit Gundam mechanical designer. All right, I need to do like I need to do an important thing here. I need to actually pick a mobile suit. So I need to pick the original G Third Savior instead of the ground attack. No, not this one. I need to pick. Okay, cool. Uh, if I were being a little more careful, I would have, <laughs> I would have actually pulled my memory card out. So I didn't have all the suits unlocked. Uh, but any percent rules do allow me to to pick this because we do have this unlocked at this point. Uh, this is the point in the game when they give you the intensive attack, which has massive cannons. Problem with intensive attack is that it moves at the speed of smell, and uh, it does. It's really good against the boss. Like the, it ac actually kills bosses real, real dead. But uh, we, we got to move. We got to. We got to go places. We got to get on the highway. Oh, I'm not paying attention. Oh, this is going to be like 5,000 years of... Oh, boy. Folks, don't you hate it when you're on the highway and you forget to, to turn off your hover state? Most embarrassing things. Yeah. When I said I wanted a walkable city, what I, what I meant was a city where I could use my Gundam. These. I think the fictional premise of this level is that we're in Tokyo. I think this is supposed to be a Tokyo highway. And we're like stopping an evil coup. All right, very important there to get rid of the proximity mine. One thing that is annoying is that the goddamn mobile suit enemy corpses kind of uh, they 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 don't like disappear. You can't like fly through the corpses, but you do have to be careful about. Uh, actually going around them unless you want to wait for them to explode it's obviously bad the other thing that's bad there is if you bump into a live one it will pull out its sword um which is not good because you know the melee damage hurts a lot in this game even from grunt enemies uh, i mentioned earlier that the original g savior has no sub weapon uh g3 savior does have a sub weapon g3 savior has rapid fire a uh, rapid fire is something that we're going to use for this boss fight So this is the same kind of thing. This guy's going to be a bit better at breaking out because he's actually going to shield attacks. When he pulls out his, uh, his green bit there in front, he's doing the front shield just like me. My, this particular projectile doesn't break through the front shield. However, when he decides to walk away from me, uh, like me, he cannot shield from behind. So, you know, struggle's real. All right. I was running out of hover meter there, but he's far away from me, so I don't have to worry. Yeah, see there, there he was trying to, he's trying to run up on me, jerk. All right, we almost got him. But yeah, the one thing you don't want to, you don't want to have happen here is you want to get in, uh, into an actual sword fight. You earned. You earned. Thank you, Commander Ben. Uh, the guy who voices that commander is actually, I think, like a Tekken character voice actor too. All right, so now at this point, uh, we're going to unlock the cool mobile suit, the one that has roller skates. And uh, we're just going to mash that straight to the end because that's ground attack mode is the fastest shit in the universe. Uh, it has roller skates. Also, it has a really powerful projectile weapon. Look at those roller skates. All right, so let's go. 
We're actually not going to shoot too many things in this level because if you'll notice that when you shoot the, um, when you shoot, it kind of pops you back a little bit. So that's just like a little bit of time loss. So, you know, we want to, for speed running. This is actually a speed run marathon. I'm doing a speed run. So I don't want to, I don't want to spend too much time dealing with that. Also, snow levels in video games are very cool. I hope you agree with that because that's objectively a correct statement. Uh, this guy also has a sub weapon that is uh, homing missile launchers, which we're in, we are going to use for some bosses. One thing I'm doing is I'm kind of like going side to side as I'm running past enemies, and that's just so I don't get shot in the back. Look, the Yakuza 5 in the snow was fine, and the Snow City was actually really good. Saij when Saijima got to play the video game, it was good. When Saijima was forced to go hunting, it was bad. Shame about those parts of Yakuza 5. Oh yeah, that's right. This is Kilimanjaro from Zeta. All those shots of Quattro Vegina sipping his sipping his, uh, his his warm beverage it's on this mountain. I mean, Gundam and Ice kind of happens sometimes. Uh, there's the bit in what an MSA team where they melt the ice. Oh, this is not where I want to be. Um, and then there's also, I mean, Gundam Wing has the bit where uh, they fight in Antarctica. Uh, Zex and Hero. That's like a really funny bit. What what a what a show. All right. Now we're gonna get a slightly more complicated boss fights. Uh, so I need to go. I need to go forward to shoot this guy from below. So I want to be shooting this guy from the side as much as I can. Because if I shoot him head on, he's going to do this little side job. This little little, little move side. But as, as you can see here, all my shots when he's sideways to me are hitting him. But now as he's... Yeah, so now, now he dodges. But once... I can also punish his sh when he shoots me. But then once he starts moving sideways again... Ah, he's too far away. Right, once he starts... turn, Once he turns his side to me... All right, yeah. This is slow. This is so slow. All right. No? There we go. Okay, cool. Gundam is fun. My energy shield. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, brother. You have my All right. Now it's time for the game to actually get a little, <laughs> a little challenging. It's been pretty straightforward so far. The last three levels uh, are definitely more uphill. This, is an this level probably has the most like claustrophobic maneuvering. I'm gonna be, for marathon safety, I'm gonna be going out of my way to kill more enemies than not. Saying your favorite anime is Transformers is not really that bad anyway, because a lot of the, a lot of that animation is done by like other studios that also worked on anime, you know? It just happens to have been commissioned by some weird goobers. Again, as I said, I'm going to be going on my way to do some murder. Oh, oh, this is bad. This is bad. Bad. Oh, I might. I might be dead. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, rip, rip the deathless run. That was me missing a shot. Now, of course, the, the punishment for dying is huge because I restart the whole level. Yeah, again, the damage doesn't doesn't mess around. This is also why I'm going to be going out of my way to... You can, like, you can navigate around all of these enemies, but it is not without risk. This time. All right, so I'm gonna go over here, turn off hover real quick, and turn. 
because I need to destroy that. That, that one mine I can't avoid. So here I'm just, I'm making decisions about whether or not to shoot enemies based on how close to me they are and like the risk of them shooting me in the back. You'll notice that some of the, some of the enemies as I approach them from far away are like turning around in multiple directions. Yeah. So you do unlock the, the upgrades in this game are basically the suits that you unlock. All right. So this is going to be an enemy that is two enemies, one health bar. Uh, I'm going to try and kill one of them first. There's also a giant laser, which complicates things. The other guy's also shooting uh, missiles at me the whole time. Uh, you'll notice that the minimap has uh, projectiles on it. Uh, so that's really helpful for me. All right, I'm going to be safe here and not not act, try and chase after him in the, uh, in the middle of the giant laser. All right, once I hear that sound, I know I'm good to go. I'll use the late the missiles to kind of chuck hit him. And then once I hit him, I'm, I should be able to stun knock him here once I get close enough. Again, what's nice with the ro uh, rollerblades is they prevent me from getting in the melee because it's an indefinite hover. So I don't have to worry about accidentally pulling out the uh, blades. There you go. The last man. Awesome. Yeah, that was a pretty good fight. I was happy with how that went. That's uh, especially you want to kill that the first one as as like before even the laser star, which is ideal, and the second one hopefully before it gets beyond that that wall on the right. All right, here we go. This is I think this is probably my like least favorite level in terms of like it just it just kills me sometimes. Yeah, infinite hover is pretty good. Turns out roller skates are infinite hover. That's why roller skates rule. I always like to wait for those two to cross each other up. I can kill both of them. And then now you can use the homing missiles to take out groups of enemies. So for, the, for safety, I just take these all out. Was a good two for one there. This is the lock on is automatic. I can't like uh, swap targets easily. So there, I was hoping to, for the lock on the swap, but it really didn't, which was uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> I really could have done with some swapping there. But anyway, that's chapter seven. That was pretty. Uh, I made that look easy. I hate that level. That level's garbo. You get stuck on so many things in that level. Anyway, with this gun, we can pretty much stun lock this guy like we did the early bosses. As long as you lock him down and get him coming towards you. Uh, the thing about this projectile compared to the earlier projectile is that it eats shields. Like, they can't shield against this thing, so uh, it's pretty much bad news for them.
All right, time for the final level, Battle of G. I should note that the final boss has three stages, so don't worry about time. I will, I will, I will let you know about time, but this is the last level. Uh, this is going to be a repeat. This is going to be uh, the same as level two, except this time we're going to kill everyone. Well, we're not actually going to kill everyone. We're going to kill the boss, that the one that killed us before. That was a cutscene where the boss comes and taunts us. That is a steep mistake. I meant to kill that man. Cool, got through there. You can you can you can very easily get a shot from behind there. All right, gotta take some safety shots here, just to clear out some of the enemies that could shoot me in the back. I don't like this. I wish I had killed more of them. Nope, nope. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh, I, I thankfully didn't get shot while I was reshielding there. Yeah, who needs some three FPS gameplay? Cause I got you. Power of the PlayStation Two. All right, cool. All right, time for time for three phases of fighting Rysis. All right, his first two phases, we're gonna try and pin. He is a very squirrely boss, so he might be able to break out of this, but I think I got him for phase one at least. Cause he's trying to move forward and like that he's always gonna get punished for that. All right, so that's phase one. All right. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. That's what happens if you don't shield right away. Good news, checkpoints on the boss. All right, you might notice there's a resource in the bottom right hand corner of the game that I haven't used the whole time and I haven't talked about. It's pressing the circle button. When you press the circle button, there are explosions. We only use this for the final boss, really. This boss is like super hard to hit and really annoying and uh, I hate, but guess what? We can just lead him into a corner because he tries to ram us from behind and we explode. <laughs> I got him. I got him. Time is when I cancel out of this uh, score screen and time. <laughs> uh, that was, I was timing the splits. Uh, so that was in fact, uh, G Savior any percent world record. <laughs> uh, this is like the millionth time I've done a PB at Shots Fired. Shouts to Shots Fired. What a cool marathon series. Uh, so that, I, I, I was running my split, so it was a flat 28 for me. Uh, but cool. Yeah, let's go G Savior. That was pretty much all in the back of those finale fights. The finale fights were what made that run good. Obviously dying on, uh, on chapter six was bad but Here's a report uh the congressional arms was, that was that was a gold split on the final on the final on the final uh, chapter so that's pretty good Commander Bias, means it's the fastest the in the has been arrested. in the official uh, army will arrive shortly the the the, the, the you know the the w weapon. century the w whatever there, i don't think there is any gundam timeline like that anyway uh the game will now serenade us with a song called dear mother which is a song up to you your mother uh that's it for me I'll be back later in the week with some Star Trek Deep Space Nine.
Uh, thank you, Matt Matt and Hecky and Tuan and Mash and all the people who are putting this event together. Putting together events is a lot of work. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, please keep watching the marathon. That's it for me for now.